Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I'm your host, The Clouded Crow, and today we'll be reacting to Darwin's Game, episode 8. Now, in the last episode, we have lost our brother, the florist, who actually turned out to be a pretty good guy. When we first bumped into him, he seemed like this schemer. Of course, he had a bunch of traps set up all throughout the entire hotel. He had that hotel under his thumb. Like, everyone was wrapped up, tangled up in his vines. He even turned some people into zombies. But then, once we found him and fought him and took him down, then we convinced him to kind of join us and be our ally and we could kind of get out of this event together and ever since that moment he's been helping us and even once rain kind of deciphered all the rings and then figured out where they needed to go he decided that he would stay and kind of defend the fort he'd defend the hotel with his life and at first it didn't seem too bad it was him versus uh sig like I'd say it was maybe 60, 40, maybe 55, 45. It wasn't anything crazy, but the tables quickly turned once Sig's partner came crashing through the window and it was just a 2v1. Both of them are super strong. There was nothing he could do. And so he ended up bleeding out. But before he finally died, he didn't go down alone. He tried to take all of them down with him. I'm sure he used his vines to kind of tangle throughout the building and make it collapse. So now this building is collapsing on top of them. They ended up making it out unscathed, but it's the thought that count, man. He was fighting all the way to the end. And so mad respect to Flores for that. And then afterwards, Rain ended up bumping into Wang's gang in this new location that the rings kind of directed her to. And then they actually caught her. They started in interrogating her and things were looking a bit bleak until we came through kaname shuka the whole gang came through we kind of started fighting and right now we're in a really weird position where wang has cut the arm off of the guy that sigil lets him tell if people are lying or not and just before he dealt this finishing blow to take him out, that's when Kaname comes in and he's seemingly surrendering. He's telling Wang, like, I'll surrender, I'll give you this if you just let me go. And at first, the guy who had his arm cut off, he was a little bit confused, but then his sigil kicked in and he noticed that Kaname was lying. So there's definitely a plan brewing behind the scenes, and I'm sure we'll see where things will go from here in this episode. So, if you guys are excited for the episode, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the episode down below, and subscribe for more SciShow content. Make sure to check out the Cloud Crowd Discord, link will be in the description, and also consider supporting me and my channel through Patreon for as low as $2. But with that all out of the way, let's get right into this episode. Alright, so this is the part of the video where you guys will grab your source videos. If you don't have one of your own, I will have one linked in the description. So all that you have to do is click the link, bring up the video, and then sync it with me. Because we'll be starting this episode in... 3, 2, 1, go. Alright. Volume sounding pretty good so far. Alright. Oh, there's another thing I forgot to mention. But I'll bring it up if they don't bring it up right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wang's not no ordinary goon. Oh! Wow! We knew that he had a grudge against him, but he actually sliced up his brother. Hmm. Dang, so what exactly is Wang's sigil? Because they said that he can teleport. But I remember around maybe the second or third time we saw him, when that girl tried to get the jump on him and light him on fire, he ended up turning the tables. There was this big explosion and she went flying and falling to her death. So I thought that his sigil had to do with explosions, but I don't know. 
maybe it's more complicated than it looks. Like, maybe it is explosions, but he's, like, using the explosions to propel himself like Bakugo? I don't know. But he specifically said teleporting, so either he can propel himself so fast that it looks like he's teleporting, or maybe something different happened up on that roof that caused the explosion and not his sigil specifically. But um, the thing I was going to mention is that Wang said in the last episode that his gang's motto is pretty much just take and take. Like, they don't negotiate. They just take whatever they want. And um, Kaname here, he was like, I'll give you this in exchange for letting me go. And so I don't think Wayne's going to take it. I think he's going to be like, well, why don't I just take it and kill you? Like, what's stopping me from doing that? But I guess we'll see. Mm-hmm. And here we go. Oh! He's gonna destroy the key. He knows he's lying. Oh, but he can't tell if someone's telling the truth then? Wait, does that make any sense? Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Mm, Hachiko. I remember that story. I get what he was saying, though. He was saying he could tell if he's lying, but he can't tell, like, what he's thinking. So he doesn't know what his plan is. Dang. A special privilege. So he needs that. Yep. Dang. I like that little demonic smile he had there. Dang. But what did he notice? Hmm. So maybe he was lying? I don't know, dude. I don't know what's going on. Now, and here's the opening. Oh. What is that?
Dang, this is some, like, next level thinking, dude. She is smart as heck. <laughs> wow. And there it is. What now, Wang? Your move, buddy. Ah, oh, it's too late. We already won. Dang. Oh, you know he's salty, man. Dang. I really like how Konami pulled through there in the end. Because not only did he distract Wang, get the final treasure, or and get the final treasure, but he also kind of convinced Ryuji not to like suicide himself. Because he was going to use the grenades to blow himself and Wang up. But then he said, the real winner is the last one left alive. Who is she? Hmm. She kind of looks familiar. Was she the girl that was in the ring a couple episodes back? There was like this underground fighting ring. Dang. Wang has us on his hit list now, though. It's a phone. Who is this? Ah, oh, the host. Dang. To think we get to talk to him in person. Hmm, now we gotta listen. All right. Dang. Okay, not bad. This is what Wang was talking about. Hmm. So then what happened in... Is her name Sui? What happened in her situation then? Dang, hey, let him know, Konami. Ah, and that was her. Hmm. Oh, maybe he runs like a, like an arena or something.
But how do you complete it though? Do you have to take everyone else out? Oh, we might have to go for that second option. Ah. Uh, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Dang it. Hmm. Wait, what? Wait, what? Didn't he just say... He was gonna, like, give him a bonus or something? Like, he was gonna give him something on top of that wish that he made. And then he just named his sigil. What? Did he, like, upgrade his sigil or something? Or maybe, like, took off some of the limitations of it? Yeah, my question is, like, how the heck do you complete this game? It can't be killing everyone because there's constantly new people joining. The three little pigs! Okay. We know this story. Funny how the youngest one is the smartest one. What the heck? Oh my gosh. I'm sorry about the motorcycle. Dang. Oh my gosh. I don't remember this story. What the heck? <laughs> The wolf used a hammer and smashed his house. <laughs> Dang. That's a pessimistic way to look at it. Oh my gosh. That like traumatize a kid. He told them that story. Like, okay, so you're saying no matter how hard I try, I'm gonna die, huh? <laughs> Dang, so we're gonna get like a clan house. Dang. I mean, I knew that this game paid pretty well, but if you're able to just casually buy a house like this. Jeez. <laughs> you guys don't know how much it sucks living, like, right next to a busy street. Always these jerks on motorcycles revving their motorcycles down the freaking lanes. It's crazy. Especially late at night, dude. Because you don't expect it. Oh, this is his daughter, the florist's daughter.
Why does he look so shady? Dang. Who smiles when giving news like that? Is that rain? She looks a little different. I don't know why. This dude is so weird. Dang. Oh, that's good. Frickin' Wang. Man. I was just about to say, it's better you, like, tell her about. Okay. I guess, I mean, of course Rain doesn't want her to know about Darwin's game. So I'm guessing that's why she didn't say exactly what happened and um she didn't want to give away that like she actually knew her father or anything so instead she just gave her her card as a um information broker so it like fits perfectly it makes sense why she'd have this information even if she um, whether she were or weren't close to him. All right, Ryuji. A tank? Dude. Maybe freaking Yujiro could. Dang, this dude! <laughs> he sounds pretty badass. <laughs> this man said he could take out a tank if it's one on one.
Dude. Dude, there's no way. My boy? Dang, Konami's been grinding! Dang, dude, this next episode is gonna be hype. <laughs> wow. Kaname. No holds barred. Dang, man. Are you sure we can take him? This man can take down a tank. Wang's gang. Who is this dude? What? Have we seen him? I don't think we have, right? He kind of reminds me of, um... He kind of reminds me of the dude that came crashing through the window. That dealt that fatal blow to Floris last episode. He kind of looks like him. The only difference is I don't remember ever seeing someone with an eye patch and all those scars on their face. So maybe we haven't seen this guy yet. But dude, clearly some time has passed because Kaname's beefed up, Rain's healed up, Ryuji's healed up. Like everybody's kind of doing their own thing. They're starting to put this alliance. They're starting to take it seriously. Like they're getting a clan house. Kanami's out here recruiting. He went up to the leader of the Donjo Boxing Club. And now they pretty much have an arrangement where they're going to fight, no holds barred, and if he wins, then he'll join his alliance. And that means if the Donjo Boxing Club leader joins our alliance, then doesn't that mean the entire Donjo Boxing Club is now our ally? Like, that is a huge upgrade. That is a huge upgrade. I don't know if there are any other big alliances out here. All I know is we have our alliance coming up. We have the Donjo Boxing Club, and we have uh, Wang's Gang. Those are the only ones we've really heard of so far. So if we can get another big contender to join ours, then we're going to be looking like a threat. Like, we're not going to be too far behind Wang's Gang. But it seems like this dude right here is trying to recruit Konami's friend. He might drag him into the Darwin's game, and we may have to fight him one-on-one -on -one later on in this series. We don't know how strong he's gonna be, we don't know what his sigil's gonna be, but I'm sure he's definitely gonna come into play and they're gonna definitely use him against us. But man, this is definitely getting interesting. I really wanna see this fight next episode, dude. So stay tuned, man. We're definitely gonna be reacting to that. So, man, I can't wait. But anyways, if you guys are excited for the episode, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the episode down below, and subscribe for more SciShow and content. Make sure to check out the Cloud Crowd Discord, the link will be in the description. And also consider supporting me and my channel through Patreon for as low as $2. But with that, I'm going to head out, and I will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.